Hi, my name is Bilan Ologoro from ARM Investment Managers, and I'll be taking you through macroeconomic and financial market events for September 2022. The composite PMI rose to 53.7 index points in September, an increase from 52.3 index points in the month of August. This signaled improvement in private sector activities despite elevated inflationary pressures and FX liquidity challenges. The increase was underpinned by strong increases in output and new orders. However, there was a notable increase in backlog of work due to challenges faced by manufacturers in securing funding needed for production activities. The National Bureau of Statistics also released inflation data for the month of August, where headline inflation rose further by 88 basis points to 20.52% in August relative to 19.64% in the month of July. And this was on the back of persistent pressures across the food and the core baskets. Food inflation accelerated to 23.12% due to the combined impact of security challenges in food producing regions, elevated input and associated logistic costs. Similarly, core inflation also rose to 17.20% due to the knock-on impact of elevated energy prices, rising commodity prices, and liquidity challenges in the FX market. The local boss recorded a loss for the fourth consecutive month in September as investors' appetite for stocks remained weak due to expectations for sustained uptick in fixed income yields. Overall, the all share index declined by 1.63% on a month-on-month -month basis, while the year-to-date returns moderated to 14.77% in September relative to 16.67% at the end of August. The bearish performance of the market was driven by losses in large cap stocks, namely Nestle, GTCO, and Zenith Bank. Sectoral performance was also negative as the insurance index suffered the biggest loss followed by the oil and gas, consumer goods, banking, and industrial goods indices. Bearish sentiment in the fixed income market extended into September as tight system liquidity spurred sell-offs by market participants due to the need to raise liquidity for bond auction and FX retail auctions. In addition, the 150 bips hike in NPR by the MPC at the latter part of the month also supported the northward trend of fixed income yields. The Treasury bill secondary market was bullish for most part of September as local investors locked in funds at short dated instruments. Yields across the curve declined by an average of 230 basis points on a month on month basis. At the last NTB auction in September, the one year paper closed at 12% relative to 9.75% at the prior auction. At the secondary market, the one year paper traded at an average of 11.40% at the end of the month. The debt management office offered 225 billion worth of instruments in September, but eventually raised 229.2 billion through reopenings of the 2025, 2032, and the 2027 FGM bonds. The participation level at this auction was slightly lower than the prior auction as B2Cover ratio moderated to 1.1 times relative to 1.2 times in the month of August. The bids for the 3-year, 5-year and 15-year benchmarks were allotted at marginal rates of 13.5%, 13.8% and 14.5% respectively. The bond market traded with mixed sentiment through the month with short dated instrument trading at 13% levels while mid to long dated instruments traded at 14% levels. With the third consecutive hike in NPR by the CBN's NPC at its penultimate meeting held in September, we expect market sentiment to remain underwhelming as investors continue to rotate funds towards the fixed income market in search of attractive returns. We also emphasize that the 500 bips I can see her to 32.5 percent would drive negative reaction to banking tickers, given the negative impact of that policy on net interest margins and, by extension, overall profitability. Although the Q3 2022 earnings season would be released shortly, we expect muted reaction to the results, given relatively higher fixed income yields. Furthermore, 
as political activities take center stage in the build-up to the general elections in February 2023, we expect growing uncertainties among investors to undermine appetite for risk assets. Similarly, we expect FPIs to continue exhibiting cold feet towards nearer assets given persistent FX liquidity challenges, increased political risk, and rising global fixed income yields. Use in the fixed income market is expected to remain bearish on the back of stubbornly high level of inflation, rising fiscal deficit by the government, and increase in the NPR, which is expected to keep rates elevated at both the primary and secondary market for treasury bills and bonds. Barring any significant maturities in the month, Liquidity is expected to remain tight, with demand and supply dynamics largely determining the extent of yields widening in the fixed income market. The high inflation rates combined with low level of liquidity in the financial system are however expected to continue supporting yields at current levels, with global central banks' resolution to maintain their hawkish policy implementation in order to combat high inflation. We expect the MPC to maintain its hawkish stance to the rising inflation. Now. A quick recap of what we have discussed thus far. Composite PMI improved in the month of September, signaling improvement in private sector activities. Headline inflation accelerated in the month of August on the back of persistent pressures across the food and the core baskets. For the equities market, the local boss suffered its fourth consecutive month of losses as domestic investors continue to rotate their funds to the fixed income market in search of higher returns. In the fixed income market, yields moderated at the treasury bill secondary market, however, remained at double digits levels at the bonds market. I hope you found this insightful. Should you have further questions or inquiries, please do not hesitate to contact our customer care representatives or relationship managers. Remember, we remain invested in your tomorrow.